perspective. So we'll move on. We've got uh, a sort of standard evening of, of reporting on EBCC activities, um, on our finances, on our delegate network. Um, we will have some elections for you to, to vote in, or those of you who are delegates to, to vote in. Um, we'll pause for a chance to ask questions uh, and discussion about that first half of the meeting. We'll then have a short break and ask you to come back to, to join us for the short updates on our, our main projects. Um, so you'll hear from people working on, on Peckham's and Peckham's analyses on EPP and, and EBA Live with brief updates of, of what we've been up to. So hopefully that will be of, of interest to you. Um, we'll start with, with my duty. I'm so sorry, I should have introduced myself to those of you who don't know. I'm Mark Eaton. I'm the EBCC chair. Uh, it's my duty to, to provide a report, the chair's report on activities. So this is over the last year since our, our AGM at our fantastic conference in, in Lucerne. Um, I should start by thanking the board members and uh, others who helped me assemble this report. Uh, and furthermore, I should thank the, the board members and the observers and all those who work on the EPCC project for their immense effort over the last year to, um, to enable us to do what we do, that sort of momental, momentous collective effort. Um, people who work on our projects and the delegates and other participants throughout, throughout Europe. And I just remembered I should have some slides up to um, illustrate what I'm talking about. So it just, bear with me, there you are. You don't have to look at me all the time, you can, um, you can see some some slides. Um, and hopefully, if I can get them to advance, there we are. So I need to thank the the board of the EBCC for the the fantastic work they've they've done. And you can see there the board presently is the same as it was um, at the end of last year's AGM in the sun. So myself, Marina, Dawn, Chris, Sergi, Mikhail. Danai, Alexi, Jean-Yves, and Ainaz, all of whom make a, a huge contribution to the running of the EBCC. I should particularly thank the, the three officers of the board in addition to my, myself. So Verena, who does a fantastic job in a supportive role as, as vice chair. Dawn, who is a, a very diligent and hardworking secretary. And Chris, who does an excellent job of looking after our finances as treasurer. Also, I should thank the, the observers to the board who play pretty terrific roles as, as well. So Anna, Sabash and Tom, Elena, Gabrielle and Peta. So there are no changes proposed to the, the board at this AGM, but there will be changes to roles within the board. And we'll come to that in the, uh, the elections item down the agenda. We've been meeting every six months as we have done for a very long time. Nowadays, we have uh, short meetings at three month intervals between those main board meetings as well. Um, oh, there you are. There's, there's most of the board. Um, we don't have a photo with all of the current board in the same place at the same time, unfortunately. Um, but that is us having an actual physical meeting. So we're very pleased to say we've been able to resume uh, in person meetings. Johnny very kindly hosted us in Belgium last month. Um, and there we are. But in sort of keeping with the, the modern way of working, we're now only meeting in person once a year. Hope to continue doing, doing that. Hopefully there'll be no pandemics to, to stop that in the future, but then I'll have, the rest of the time is our in Zoom meetings as it is for everyone else. So one of the big developments over the last year, we, we signposted at our last AGM AG, in, in Lucerne our plans to establish an EBCT office or secretariat, permanently staffed capacity to, to carry out our, our core activities. And I'm delighted to say that office is up and running and I'm doing very, very well. Based at the CSO in Prague, I'm run by Petter and Elena. You can see here, I, this, this is Petter practicing his bird watching. Um, he's brushing up on his warbler identification with, with Elena. Um, and I, I don't think I, I need to introduce Petra and Elena to you all from their, their fantastic work for the, the EBCC over many years. Uh, and it's great also to have the support of CSO in this, this venture. Um, so 
Petra is the manager of the EBCC office and Elena is the communications officer. Between them, they're engaged on a wide range of activities supporting the EBC's work. Um, of course, Elena is still working on Peckham's and Petra's continues to support activities for, for Ever2 uh, and Peckham's work as well, but they have been developing this sort of work program you see here. I'm not gonna talk any more about this because uh, they will give a short update on office uh, work following, following this. So I'll move on still briefly, very briefly about the EBCC's three main projects. And I will keep this brief because you will hear about them in the second half of the meeting from those intimately involved in these, these projects. So Peckham's continues to prosper. They've completed a three year EC tender seeking new funding at the the moment it's this uh, rather frustrating um, issue of struggling to secure funding um, once one funding period comes to to an end which I'm sure we're all quite familiar with uh, but in the meantime they've been doing terrific work the trends and indicators were updated in November of last year using data up to 2021 they're getting faster the Beckham project is getting faster at receiving data at analyzing it and publishing it um, Terrific work. There are more countries contributing than, than ever before, but I shall leave Elena to, to update you on that shortly. The European Breeding Bird Atlas. As you know, the book was published in December 2020. The website with the maps on was published early in 22. Um, and so you might imagine this, this project is, is over, but far from it. Really, so the book is still selling. You can see over 8,000 have been sold to, to date. Uh, there are about 800 left with our publishers in the last print run, which was produced last year. So still some left if you think you need more copies. And why shouldn't you? Um, and the royalties you can see there. So the royalties received on that have now covered the contribution that was made to the publishers to enable the book to be sold at a lower price when it was, was published and we're pleased to have reached that, that sort of milestone of 50,000 euros. Um, PETA has been helping Verena Keller with an archiving project. So making sure that materials, both digital and hard copy from the, the Atlas are being properly archived in the library at the Swiss Ornithological Institute to ensure that they are there for future generations of whoever comes along decides to do an, an Atlas again for example. Um, but the other thing about this not being a, a sort of finished project is this exciting new developments of, of EBBA Live. So new ongoing projects, mapping Europe's birds being piloted at the moment. And again, I'm not going to say anything about that because we have Sergio Hirando who will be able to update us in the second half of the, the meeting on that. Here we can see the the new developments of the websites. So the website is still there making access to the map. The new developments that allow national coordinators access to their, their own data, kilometer resolution, and also the finer scale data that was used for, for the model mapping. And finally, you're a board portal. Again, lots going on here. Some of you will probably be feeling a little bit tired because you've come from an all day meeting. Uh, from EBUP, so new developments, exciting new things coming out from, from that, I'm sure. And I've just put up here some of the, the big numbers, you know, how this, this project is prospering, bringing in a huge amount of data, engaging with a huge amount of observers, and, and really doing terrific work and producing valuable outputs for some of the key questions at the moment, such as problems with, with avian-borne diseases. So uh, again, Gabriel will be able to update us with that later in the meeting. There have been other uses of um, EBCC data. So we're working with numerous projects using data from those, those three projects in a variety of ways, some involved in the EBCC, some more remotely by uh, giving data, providing data to academics wanting to look at certain, certain things. So we deal with a lot of data requests, making our data available, uh, best use of what's there. Just one example of work that's gone on in the last year was the publication of this wildlife comeback in Europe report led by Rewilding Europe uh, and the Zoological Society of London. EBCC were a partner in that things like our Peckham's data and our EBA2 data informing monitoring of trends and distribution in these recovering species that the report talks about. 
There's another thing I'm not really going to talk about. There's a lot I'm not really talking about in this, this chair's report. It's quite a, an easy, easy way of doing things because Dan and I will talk to us shortly about the delegate network. So all I can say is that that's how wonderful they are. Here are many of our delegates and attendees at our last conference. Uh, and I should just say that with 90 delegates, it's really in great shape, our, our, our network. Communications. So that's a vital component of our healthy and functioning uh, community. And really, I just want to encourage you all here um, to, to engage and help with, with this. You're probably all aware, hopefully you all read our e-newsletter. That comes out quarterly. Please remember it. If you have activities, events, uh, projects, publications that you want to publicize and get out to people right across Europe through our newsletter, then let Elena know. So this is going out quarterly. So four opportunities, sometimes for special editions as well, four opportunities through the year to promote things. So please remember it. And also when you get it, read it, circulate it, encourage others to engage with it. There's quite a lot of interesting stuff in it, it's well worth using. And of course, social media is very important to everyone nowadays and, and we are out there on Facebook and Twitter. So if you're on these, these networks, please do follow us and encourage others to, to do the same and, and engage with us. Just a short note on, on conferences. So um, this is the University of Latvia, a splendid looking building um, or part of it. So we announced last year at our Lucerne conference, our attention to. Oh, I just suddenly lost my slides. Excuse me. Not sure what happened there. Right, hopefully they're back with you. Um, so, yes. Our, our next conference will be held in the spring of 2025, the first week of April, hosted at the University of Latvia in Riga. We don't have much to, to report on that other than that at the moment. We know that Einaz and his organization team are already at work. He's been consulting us on, on things about the venue and so forth. Um, I'm very confident this is gonna be another excellent conference. I'm already looking forward to it and the opportunity to um, to see some more of Riga and to meet with, with all of you again. So um, yeah, stay stay tuned for, for more details on that. First Census News. So the editorial team led by Alexi with help from John Eve and myself published one volume, so number 35 in the last year that came out in December with papers about the COVID pandemic, the impact on birds and observers on birds in Iceland and in Western Siberia. Um, and we are working on, in fact, we're working on two volumes, two the next, next issues of, of this. So thank you for Alexi. Thank you also to Olga Voltzik for her excellent work, hard work on the, the layout and Eugenie Koblik for providing the illustrations which we use in BCN. Again, please consider BCN if you've got something suitable for us. Um, we're, we, we are looking for, for suitable papers to, to publish. Particular help, thanks to Alexi for his work on BCN in recent years. He's going to set, step down from the role of editor in chief to devote more time to his research officer role for the EBCC, but he will stay part of the editing team, I hope at least. So I think you'll agree that the EBCC has achieved some remarkable things in, in the last few years, longer indeed, uh, and continues to do so. Um, and this has been through the sort of massive efforts of thousands of volunteers, ornithologists, and scientists, and conservationists who coordinate their efforts, and those who are part of our community, the delegates. And so um, but this is often, you know, all of us working on insufficient budgets, on a shoestring, uh, insecure funding. You'll hear from, from Chris, our, our treasurer, shortly, our finances are relatively healthy. Um, and because of that, we're happy that we begin to continue on the path we signaled at last year's AGM to finance, provide finance to improve monitoring, particularly in low and middle income countries across Europe through a small grant fund. So we are able to give targeted, limited, but targeted support. So this small grants fund will be to support national bird monitoring activity, as you can see there. 
So the sort of thing we'll be hoping to support are the startup and new monitoring schemes, emergency funding to fill, fill gaps in resourcing of existing projects, atlases, startup funding for online tools, capacity building activities, and so forth. We've been working with bird monitoring in Serbia, Moldova, and Montenegro, piloting this approach, supporting these countries in developing uh, international census plots of so small scale common bird monitoring schemes. Uh, but we will formally open this small grant fund this spring. So within the, the next few days, I hope by, by early May, we will have full details on our website of, of the scheme, of what is eligible and how to apply, what the application process is. There'll be a form um, relative, yeah, relevant questions to, to answer uh, about what funding is required for and, and so forth. And we, so we want to have a first round of grants to cover work in 2024, identified by later this year by, by the autumn. So we'll keep the application period open probably until the end of June, provided we can get details out on the website early enough in May. Uh, and we will be sort of publicizing this. So please um, keep an eye on our website. We'll let people know when this is up there and, and consider if, if you or partners could benefit from, from this. You'll, you'll see the sort of description of what we're hoping to support. Um, it will grants will be time limited, so more, no more than 18 months, uh, and they'll have a maximum amount of application, which will probably be 10,000 euros. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not huge amounts and not for incredible periods, but I think this can make a really important difference to, to countries um, across, particularly in, in the east of Europe, southeastern Europe, really help develop monitoring and support monitoring there. So that I think is about all I've, I've got to say. Uh, I think I hope you'll agree that this has been another good year for the EBCC. There's lots going on. Our projects are continuing to, to flourish. We've developed that long wanted core capacity in our, our office. Um, and we're hoping to, to go a little bit further and support more in other countries through the small grant fund. So thank you to everyone who supports our, our work and everyone who has worked on, on taking the EBCC forward this year. And at that point, I shall stop. That's more than enough of me. Uh, so we'll move on in the agenda and um, look for a report from the first report that we've ever had from the EBCC's office. So, uh, Petter, are you able to, to give us an update? Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Uh, uh, it's indeed the first report of, from the EBCC office. Uh, it's going to be rather short, uh, but anyway, the aim of this report is just to provide a brief, brief update what's been done within the office within the first year of its existence because we've set up the office in April a year ago and uh, what we aim is to, to support the EBCC board uh, basically to allow the EBCC to achieve its goals uh, as the organization. You heard from Mark that uh, Alena and me have been working as uh, officers for the EBCC office both part-time um, and uh, here I, I try to provide some more details within the structure which Mark presented already, uh, the structure of the EBCC office um, agenda. The, one of the key points uh, within our agenda is uh, developing the capacity and maintaining the partnership. Uh, which is really crucial for uh, you know, for the EBCC as an organization based on the delegates and uh, coordinators in different European countries. And obviously, the effort to increase the capacity south and east of Europe 
uh, is the key. So we started uh, supporting the international census plots in, in the three countries already. Uh, we've been discussing the development of regional schemes. Uh, these regional schemes are meant for the larger countries where we hardly can achieve the coverage of the full territory, uh, but uh, some regions are good enough in the capacity to provide the regional, uh, regional indices, which uh, in the future we can combine into the national, uh, national indices. We've engaged in the live project, and I think Gabriel will provide more information about that, uh, which is basically aimed uh, at the portals, but uh, we, uh, we included as well the international census plots and capacity building. So this is part of the, uh, uh, of the agenda of the EBCC office, which is built into, the, into that live projects. And, Whenever we can, we try to help case by case to uh, the developing schemes, like examples here. Uh, at the picture, you can see Sylvia uh, from Moldova with the Czech ambassador uh, who brought personally the, the second hand binoculars uh, to be used uh, in Moldova for the monitoring. Uh, we facilitated delivery of the audio recorders to Ukraine. So this this kind of assistance, which is sometimes uh, really ad hoc assistance, uh, the op opportunity appears, and we try to to help our colleagues. Uh, it's uh, part of our job as well. Mark already mentioned the small grant fund, which we really want to start running from uh, from this spring. So the next year we can uh, we can have the first grants and we have some experience with small small grants from EBA2 and also from the international census plots already. Part of our job is also assistance to the countries in the methods uh, that's mostly in Peckhams where the countries, for example, need to, some improvements in their schemes or they plan uh, new elements in the schemes and everything is done uh, within the liaison with the EBCC. Delegate officer, uh, the fundraising is the uh, is the key activity within our agenda as well. I must say we've so far we've not been as active as we should be. So we have to be more active in the in the near future. And basically, the sources of the uh, sources of the funding are the projects uh, and the data handling fee. Uh, and we have one case of the organization, the Swiss Ornithological Institute, who contributed uh, to the uh ebcc office running costs uh by the donation so we encourage other organizations within the ebcc wider network to help the ebcc office uh, uh, in the same way um, and we prepare uh the scheme of the fundraising via, via the donation portal aimed at the small small donors, which would be suitable, especially for the small grant fund, because within the small grant fund, at one side, we need to have the grants to be supported. And on the other side, we need to have money to be, to be used for that. And the communication is an important part of, uh, of our job as well, which is mostly uh, era of uh, Alena. Uh, and mostly she did this, this job, the presentations and the meetings and conferences. After the COVID pandemics, uh, it's becoming more important again to be in person at the meetings and speak to the, talk to the people and give the presentations. But a part of that, the EBCC website and other electronic ways of new communication like the social media, the newsletter uh, are equally important and we have to develop them. And the currently the new communication strategy of the EBCC is under preparation. And there are some other activities we've been engaged, uh, like keeping the contacts with the EU in last year that was mostly uh, mostly about the EU nature restoration law, which uh, assuming the the law will be accepted, uh, will contain important elements about the indicators. The farm and bed indicator should be there as a, one of the indicators. We've tried to be active as much as possible in responding responding to the different funding opportunities. Usually, these big grants. Uh, 
international grants uh, are not suitable for the EBCC as an organization, but our role as an EBCC office is to facilitate uh, the contacts to put the people together and to try to organize the consortia uh, who could apply uh, for the research, which is uh, in the interests of the EBCC. We've been contributing uh, to various research papers, usually based on PECOMS data or, or EBA2, uh, and some support to the EBCC offices, like the assistance with the EBA2 data requests or assistance in uh, making the EBA2 archive available. It's also our our job where we were engaged in the in the last year. Uh, so that's in brief the overview of what has been done in the last year. Uh, I will be happy to answer any questions at the end of this of this session. And now at the end of my presentation, I I really like to uh, to thank to the whole network to the coordinators uh, to the coordinators of the main projects and. Uh, to this uh, to the EBCC board for the support because <laughs> EBCC office is here to support the board but without the support of the board we hardly can <laughs> can do that so thank you thank you very much Peter and and again uh the board's thanks to to yourself and and to Elena for for taking this this new role this, this new sort of challenge, uh, and there are some challenges with it, and I'm taking it forward. Um, yeah, we couldn't think of two better people to be sort of developing this. So, um, and you're absolutely delighted uh, that you've taken it on and the progress you've made over the, the first first year. So um, that is that's wonderful. Okay, moving on, uh, we come to to finances, uh, and I'll ask Chris to to give our, our presentation um, as our treasurer. So Chris. Okay, hello everybody. I will try to share my screen. Is this clear to everybody? Um, I will give a very brief explanation of last year's financial report. So here are the key figures. Uh, at the start of last year, our capital was over 77,000 euros. And in the course of the year, we had benefits mainly from data charges uh, by uh, handling the data of uh, EBA2 uh, upon the request of uh, researchers. And we have, of course, the royalties still in this year of the sales of the ABBA2 book. Of course, we have expenses as well. Uh, banking costs are actually quite high. In the Netherlands, it's almost 400 euros. And the main expense was the support uh, of the international census plots from Serbia and Moldova. Uh, so at the end of uh, uh, last year, it should be uh, uh, 2022 instead of 21 as stated here, we had a capital of over 85,000 euros. So when we looked at the EBCC's finances on the long term, uh, starting in 2060, uh, we see an increase in money, mainly from 2019 onwards. And at this moment, we even have over 90,000 euros at our banking account. So in conclusion, we can say that the financial position of the EBCC has strongly improved over the past four years and this of course enables us to invest in all kind of new activities activities that contribute to the ebcc's primary goals and as already stated by petter and mark uh, this will be further support of the international census spots program in serbia moldova and uh, montenegro 
funding the secretariat, starting the small grant fund, and uh, supporting other kinds of EBCC related projects, for instance, in contribution to a large life prep EBP program, which will hopefully start in the course of this year. So that's about uh, it. Okay, thank you very much. Chris, we have a, a two person uh, audit commission, Tone Devos and, and Ruth Fobben, who, um, who mark Chris's, Chris's homework and, and uh, approve his his annual reports and I think I saw um yes there is on my screen Rude. Uh, yes, I know you I'm looked here. over the, the the books are you happy with uh with Chris's report yep I have to share with you that I'm a bit distracted because there's a hoopoe in my garden <laughs> sorry <laughs> that's that's this is this is the sort of meeting where you're allowed to to say that sort okay. of thing and it's also and the king's day isn't it yeah, it's King's Day. Yeah, I had a meeting of EBP all day, and now I'm here with you. So the King is not so important as EBCC, of course. <laughs> um, but yes, I'm part of the audit commission together with Kuhn de Vos. And Kuhn can't be here tonight, but uh, we have shared our opinion on, uh, on the books. We have had a look at Chris's report. He shared with us all the details. And we are happy to announce that we advise the board to discharge you, uh, Chris, uh, for the financial year 2022. So uh, everything was in order. Um, and we are happy to see also, of course, like Chris was stating, that the financial situation of EBCC uh, is quite healthy. That's nice to see. I know from the past that it uh, sometimes uh, was more but difficult. But, uh, EBCC in a financial way is prospering and Chris did a good job and so yeah carry on <laughs> we will put this in an official letter to the EBCC board so you can see that we uh, discharge Chris for his work and that's it okay thank you very much Ruud and, and Kuhn for for that that task in supporting us and, and checking that and again thank you very much Chris for your hard work in in uh, working as our treasurer, maintaining our finances and doing such a, a, a good job. Moving on, uh, we'll move to another another board member who carries out an important role for the EBCC. So uh, if I can invite Danai to give us an update on the delegate network from her role as delegate officer. Hello, everybody. I'll share my screen. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes or not? Yeah, we can hear you, Danai. Yes. Okay, and can you see Quite my well. screen? We can, yes. Okay, so hello everybody. As you know, I've taken over the role of the delegate officer from Henning in the during the Lucerne conference. I'll just take you through any changes in the status of our delegate uh, list group uh, since the last year. So at the moment we have 90 delegates from 47 countries. Well, the only countries that have one delegate are Azerbaijan, Georgia, Liechtenstein, and Serbia at the moment. And if we take uh, the number of countries in Europe as 51, which I'm not sure whether we would uh, um, ever have delegates from Monaco, San Marino, and Vatican City, we are only mainly missing Kazakhstan. Uh, I'll be talking and presenting our new delegates from Ukraine and the changes in the Ukraine uh, um, country. Um, up to now, the last year, we have communicated through uh, email with you. If you have any problems with our communication, please let us know. Uh, if you're not receiving the emails, we probably have your old email and you should be letting us know about that. Uh, our communication at the moment is mainly related to reminders for articles or news with respect to your projects and our website. Also with respect to support for the Turkish uh, earthquake. So about six or seven uh, communications with you through, through myself. Um, 
from with respect to the changes, just to inform you that we have been requested to uh, uh, agree on a change uh, for Ukraine. Uh, Yuri Struz is stepping down from the State Museum of Natural History uh, in uh, Ukraine. And uh, Tatiana uh, Kuzmenko is taking over. Tatiana is here with us and she might be uh, willing to present herself. Most of you know her as Tanya. She's currently uh, working with the Swiss Ornithological Institute and the Frankfurt Zoological Society. Uh, you most, most of you in the network know her through, um, through the Atlas work and the Common Bird Census. Uh, just to stress here that new delegates can be recommended only through writing by other existing delegates of our network. That doesn't necessarily mean that the net delegates have to be from the same country. So, uh, Tanya, would, we, would you like to um, present yourself? Uh, just a couple of words. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all. Yeah, you probably remember I made some presentations about Ukrainian Atlas, which was uh, published not for a long time ago. And now I'm here in Switzerland, in Swiss Mythological Institute, but I, I didn't lost my connection with Ukraine and I tried to work up all together with Yuri, now on Pan-European Common Bird Monitoring Scheme, and thanks to uh, support from BPCT, we now got recorders, and I hope we are starting in a couple of days. So, yes, I will try to do my best to, to do as much as possible and to be useful at this position. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Um, my network is saying that I it's a bit unstable, and sometimes because I'm at home, it falls, so I'll be quite quick in the rest. Thank you very much, Tanya, and welcome. And Yuri is not with us here to say thank you, but we thank him and I will uh, write to him. Uh, I, uh, the role, I just want to remind you of the role of the delegates. Uh, they must be involved in monitoring projects and Atlas work and the, generally speaking, the EBCC projects. And uh, we would like them, uh, well, in the constitution of the EBCC, uh, they have to provide updates and attend uh, where possible, the, the workshops and the conferences of uh, of our, of our uh, group. Um, but at the same time, we would like you to keep in touch and share your ideas. And if you have ideas to improve our communication, uh, we also need you to also disseminate the information, either uh, for, whether that is our uh, newsletter or any activities because uh, this is our strength, your networks, uh, that's the main role of the delegates to, to keep us in contact and, uh, and disseminate the news. So thank you very much from my side. I'll stop sharing now. Okay, thank you very much, Danai, for your, your work curating our uh, our network, our delegate network. Thank you all, the, the delegates here, for, for your work for representing the EBCC and being part of our network. And please heed Danai's in, um, sort of appeal to engage and be involved as, as much as you can, because um, that's what makes us a, a successful organization. Right, moving on um, through the, the first half of the agenda, we come to the issue of elections. Um, and you may have noted, I said earlier, there will be no changes to the board composition. There is no one planning to, to leave the, the board at this AGM. But we do have a suggestion for changes in, in roles. Um, and this is, a, this is a point of some sadness for myself because it's been a great uh, privilege and honour to be the chair of EBCC for the last four years. But I am now going to seeking to step down from the role um, of, of chair, which yeah, is is rather rather sad. I'm rather loath to do so, but it's a sort of work issue. I do not have the the time to to do a proper job of being EPCC chair, and I don't want to um, just be a bit dead weight not doing a good job of being chair. Um, I I have I don't have institutional support for time to be uh, to be chair of the EPCC. So with great regret, I'm going to step down, but I don't intend to, to leave the EBCC board. I'm still very committed to supporting the organization 
Uh, and in fact, I've been suckered into taking over from Alexi. So when I mentioned Alexi stepping down from editor to chief of BCN, I am going to uh, take that role up instead, which is something I may come to, to regret. Um, anyway, so the, that's that's one piece of news, but the really, really good news um, is that the, our proposals for changes in board members are the, the new chair of the EBCC should be Marina Keller, um, which I'm sure you will all recognize is fantastic news and for the EBCC, the network. Uh, and the next bit of good news is the new vice chair supporting uh, Verena will be Sergi Aranda. So these are two people that really I don't need to give much introduce, introduction to, you know, of Verena and Sergi and what they've given to EBCC over, over years and so forth. And you will appreciate how good they will be and how good it is for the EBCC um, that these two shall take these roles up. So um, all we have to do now is formalize that by voting for them. So this is for delegates only. Uh, and we shall keep this keep this simple. Um, you should all know how to find your little um, hand up button um, in the reactions button at the bottom of your Zoom uh, screen. So, will those who approve the uh, the election of Irina Keller to position of chair of the EBCC? Um, oh, we've had. Poll arrive from if you can ignore the poll that's just arrived um, while we while we vote maybe so um, those who, of you who are delegates and support the election of Marina please um, put your electronic hand up now. Okay. We did decide between us who's counting. Does our delegate officer want to count? It, it is at the end of the, at the bottom. I can see how many it says, but if you keep, okay. if there's people which don't have the electric one, uh, they have their physical hand up, then I cannot. And if somebody's clapping, is it considered a, <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, so 17 people, 18 people have their electronic hand up. 17. Now it's going up and down. 17. Okay. And okay, hands down, people, because you have to vote second time. So any uh, hands off. And then those who support the election of Sergi Hirando to the position of vice chair, please raise your hands now. So that's 22 people, 23. I think more people know how to <laughs> how to put their hands up now. Wait. Okay, well, we're going to take both as... as um, 24. Votes in favour, we will... Look, so the poll that is there is to register those who are delegates attending. So we get a number of um, those are delegates. Yeah, but that is a majority of delegates for both cases, clearly, um, because we will recognize that is um, fantastic news. So thank you very much. You can put your electronic hands down now. That is our voting over. So we are all agreed that uh, Verena Keller be the new chair and Sergi Rando the vice chair of EPCC. So um, Welcome. Seems strange to say welcome to both of them. Anyway, welcome to their, their new roles and congratulations and thank you all for, for voting. Okay, that takes us to the end of the um the content for this first half of the the AGM. Uh, I want to just pause and ask whether there are any questions from the floor on anything that we've we've covered. We've talked about BBCC activities the office, the finances, the delegate network. Um, are there any questions? No, just to say thank you, Mark, for everything. My pleasure, it really has, has been a pleasure. It will continue to be a pleasure anyway. <laughs> Not going away yet. 
And anyway, you're a delegate. Delegate, board member, and apparently an editor. So, okay. Well, we thank you very much. Uh, we will have a short break then. Um, I realize some of you, well, all of you will have been working all day. I should have said at the beginning, thanks for coming along and attending this at the end of the, of the working day, particularly those who might have been in an EBP meeting. Anyway, we will take a short break, um, quarter of an hour. Um, my clock says it's, yes, we make it just slightly shorter than quarter of an hour return on the on the hour that so at eight o'clock we won't keep you too long in the second half it's not going to be a long long session um but if we return then and i see actually that's probably not a residual vote from farina is that a hand up farina yes that's, that's a hand up i'm not a delegate anymore <laughs> uh we cannot just leave you here mark just going out to take a break it is, of course, very difficult to thank you in a virtual meeting, and I'm sure we will thank you properly in two years' time in, uh, in Latvia. I remember very well when Mark and I were talking about uh, the role of chair during a long wait for our flights in, at uh, Schiphol Airport, it was. And uh, somehow Mark was hesitating to, to take over this role, and I was convinced that Mark would be a good chair. And fortunately, these flights were late because he eventually thought, yes, that might be a good idea. And uh, I offered to be vice chair and support him uh, as much as I could. And I think it has been a very good choice and Mark has really been a very good chair. Uh, of course I regret that Mark has decided to step down as chair but uh, knowing a bit about Mark's uh, situation and uh, it's quite clear that there are other priorities and EBCC should not take up uh, life and uh, so I think we I hope we have found a solution, at least for the next two years, uh, together with Sergi and myself, that we can steer this boat, the EBCC boat, through the next, through the coming years. It's a very challenging time for EBCC. We have the new office. We EBCC is more and more respected, also within the European Commission, for instance. That's what we hear also from uh, our project coordinators, from Sergi, from Alena, from Gabriel, uh, that finally, after so many years, the EB more and more people within Europe actually realize that the EBCC network is really doing a great job and is very useful also, also for their tasks. So thanks again, uh, Mark, and you can chair the second half of the session. I will take over then the next AGM. And thank you all for yep, giving uh, your votes to Sergi and me. I hope we will fulfill your expectations. Thank you very much, for Farina, uh, for the kind words. Thank you very much for all the support over these four years from you and, and the rest of the board. It really has been been a pleasure, and I'm I'm certain that uh, that you and Serge and the rest of the board, including me, will carry on doing a great job, and you will be, be fantastic. And yes, you can all thank me, uh, thank me properly with beers in Latvia in two years' time. Just very br briefly to uh, inform you on the outputs and progress we made uh, last year. Uh, as you all are aware, in November we published the 2022 Trends and Indicators update, uh, not only at the website, but we also published the leaflet. Um, if some of you could use these leaflets and would like to have more paper copies, please don't hesitate to ask us. We still have some copies in CSO and we can send it to you. Uh, the, 
the data set is now based on data from already 30 countries and we will come to a new country in our data set. It's Andorra for the first time. And uh, we have still the same number of species, 170. And um, the main output is that we uh, managed to accelerate the production of the outputs. So the 2022 update is based on data until 2021. So there is only one year delay already, which is really great. And thank you all, all the national coordinators, uh, as well as my colleagues in CSO uh, for this achievement. We also finished uh, some special task, let's say. We explored associations of bird species with unis habitats, but this is uh, the topic Anna will describe later in more detail. Uh, we have finished uh, many technical improvements uh, regarding our trim shell or our swan, as well as we revised Peckham's site level database. We now uh, gather uh, data from 39 monitoring schemes uh, by the year 2020. Uh, and, Alina, uh, Alina, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. The, the slides are not moving. You are okay. showing still the, the first slide, so people cannot see the, the, well, the what you are talking about. You are sharing the slides and not the and not the um, not the presentation. Yeah. Your presentation, yes. Ah, oh, yes, it's so, better like that. So, what can you see now? Now it's good. <laughs> the presentation, no, it's fine. Oh, the main. Thank office. you. Thank you for reminding me. Well, okay, so these were the the main outputs. Uh, we presented uh, our results and promoted it via website and uh, social media, but we also in February updated our uh, data set in Zenodo repository, which supplements the data paper we published uh, three years ago. Uh, as Petra already mentioned, we, we, uh, were, we were invited to several international conferences and workshops where we gave nine talks uh, and presented PECONS and EBCC. Um, our uh, very important task uh, and job of PECONS Co coordination team is to maintain the network all over Europe, so we uh, arranged a Peckham's webinar, which is now a tradition, I would say. Uh, in February, there was a webinar. Uh, it was uh, attended by 39 participants. And we also uh, made some survey. Uh, we spread questionnaires among the national coordinators. So I would like to thank to you all uh, who gave us your response. Uh, we also are in touch with coordinators, we provide consultations, and we also need to meet <clears throat> the stakeholders of the project. So on a regular basis, we are in touch with Eurostat or European Commission, mainly the DG environment. Uh, the most important uh, communication regarded the new EU nature restoration law, and we are happy that the uh, bird indicators uh, will be involved in this regulation. Um, in the end, uh, until today, we, we published four uh, scientific publications. There are other publications in prepar under preparation. And uh, we are currently involved not only in European Commission tender, but in uh, other projects. Um, uh, this current uh, tender um, we are funded from um, is going to be ended, uh, finished nearly in two days or three days. Uh, I just uh, would like to express um, that it's a bit frustrating that we still don't have uh, funding for the future. Uh, let's hope that uh, the promise uh, uh, the European Commission gave to us will come through soon and they will fund the indicators production in the future. Uh, in 
And finally, I really wish to thank you all, all the volunteers counting the birds in the field, all the national coordinators, EBCC delegates, and mainly the whole team, uh, Jana, Eva, Petr, Anna, and Javi. Thank you very much for your help. And uh, this is it from my side. And sorry again for the technical problems. Thank you very much, Elena. Uh, the technical problems were no, no issue. We could still, that was a very, still a very clear and good presentation of some great progress. So thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, so moving moving on, um, we'll now go to, <laughs> to Anna, um, who will, will give us a, an overview of some of the research that's been done with Peckham's data. So Anna, Anna Gamero, over to you. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, let me see if I can. Do you see the presentation? Yes. Because I don't see it. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't really see it myself, so I don't know where. Well, anyway, do you see the the the, the presentation mode or or the it's slides? It's still in, in the, the slides. slides. Yeah. And now? No, oh, it's still the slide. You should share the other presentation mode. Okay, one moment. Sorry about that. Um, so you have to start the presentation before sh sharing the screen, I think. Okay, now. Okay. I think I'm. Um, is it okay now? That's it. Yep, that's great. Yes. Okay. So um, I will uh, just talk a bit about the work we did um, on the uh, associations of the European birds with the UNIS habitat types. Um, so does it move? The, the slides don't move? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, OK, good. Um, so just a bit of context, as you know, that uh, biodiversity loss is linked to anthropogenic activities and monitoring biodiversity um, is necessary to, to inform conservation and policy and biodiversity indicators are a very important tool for that. And um, so particularly trend indicators that combine information on uh, the trends of several species that are typical of a habitat um, that are uh, then combined to use a simple measure of the state of, of this habitat. Um, then uh, the birds are a very uh, good group to, to produce indicators because we have a lot of data on them, we know them well, and they also cover many ecological niches. Uh, but to produce uh, a meaningful trend indicator, uh, we need good population estimates over time and to select species that are going to be responsive, uh, responsive to changes in the habitat. Uh, in Peckham's, we produce now uh, two habitat indicators, the farmland bird indicator and the forest bird indicator, and the species uh, selection is done by expert judgment. But uh, there are also quantitative approaches for species selection that have been used to uh, select uh, Especially species. Um, is this I disappear here? Um, so slides don't move now. Okay. So one example of of that uh, was uh, in a study on on Denmark, for example, where rel relative habitat use was um, was used to to select species for indicators based on um, how they were associated with the habitats. 
and uh, the pattern of, of the specialists, uh, usually uh, you see a, and um, the species is highly associated with one habitat and avoids or is uh, not associated with the other habitats and the generalist species are uh, associated in much uh, less degree to, to many different habitats. And uh, for the indicators, the specialist species um, are uh, better because they will react more to the changes in the habitat. Um, the UNIS habitat classification is a hierarchical classification of habitats that is used in the EU to assess uh, the red list of habitats. And in a recent report, um, it was uh, stated that box myers, grasslands, and freshwaters are the habitats uh, that are in worse um, conservation, and that forest um, scrubland and sparsely vegetated habitats are uh, in better conservation status. This analysis uh, was done uh, mainly based on expert assessment um, of the habitat degradation. So in this uh, context, the EU Commission uh, contact us in TECAMS and uh, ask us if we could try to quantify bird species association uh, with the UNIS habitat types and to assess the degree of degradation of um, these habitats. And for the first task, we calculated habitat preference indices of um, the bird species and then produced multi-species indicators. We use the Peckham site level data, which are the, the annual abundances at the census sites. We have the coordinates. And for more, uh, more schemes, we have all recorded species in the, in the sites. And the approach here was to try to find the link between the species recorded and uh, the habitats present in the sites. So for that, uh, we calculated the percentage of coverage of each of these 45 units habitat types in this one kilometer buffer around the, the sites. And uh, we excluded uh, nocturnal exotic species, uh, species that were rare in our uh, data set, and also habitats that were rare in our sites. So finally, uh, we used data from 2000 to 2019 from 25,000 sites and 25 countries and uh, 260 bird species. And uh, we did the analysis on 34 habitat types. And um, just as an example for the black woodpecker, so we look at the sites with presence of the species for a particular year, and we calculated what was the coverage in average of each habitat type. And as a baseline, uh, we use all monitor sites that were uh, monitored in the squares where the species uh, was present. And then we compare uh, the habitat coverage in, uh, in the baseline with the species presence. And uh, we calculated the ratio, which uh, was the habitat preference index. So basically, if uh, a habitat was more uh, common where the species was present than in all the sites, then the, the habitat preference would be positive and otherwise would be negative. And for these species, uh, we found a positive association with four uh, forest types and negative association with the rest of habitats. So then we wanted to select the most uh, specialist species for uh, the production of indicators. And so we had the pool of all species that had a positive association with the habitat, but these were uh, generalist and specialist. And we wanted to select the most uh, specialist species. And we selected those that had above average habitat preference index and above average percentage of coverage in this, in, of a particular habitat in the site. And then for those species, we calculated indices. Um, using only uh, the sites that had coverage on that particular habitat. We use our trim and uh, we combine the information into an indicator using the MSI tool. 
So uh, we did that, as I said before, for 34 habitats. So I'm not going to show you <laughs> 34 indicators. Um, and so I just want to show you um, an example for the forest work indicator. So this is the, the forest work indicator that uh, we have in Peckham's, which uh, has 34 species and has this, this trend. And so with our quantitative uh, approach, uh, using the, the UNIS um, forest types. So uh, we selected, uh, and this procedure that I uh, mentioned before, we selected this two thirds are the same species that uh, were selected based on expert judgment in the Peckham's indicator. And because we included many more species in the analysis, the, the ones in red are species that are actually not Peckham species and only one Peckham species that is not considered uh, a forest indicator was selected in our quantitative analysis. And then we produce um, an indicator on this species selecting only the, the forest sites. And we, um, we show that it had a, an increase uh, during this 20 year period, which corresponds uh, to this period here. So, um, some species of the Peckham's forest indicator were not uh, selected for a general forest indicator, but were selected for specific types of forests, like uh, coniferous forest or deciduous forest. And in the end, a uh, few species uh, were not selected in any indicator from the one that uh, we currently have. So in this uh, report that we did for the commission, we assess habitat species association, for uh, these 34 units habitat types of level one and also level two. And we calculated habitat specific trends for 206 species, 80 of which are non Peckham species. And uh, just uh, very briefly, at the level uh, one, which are uh, the, uh, the categories that are more broad categories in habitats, um, we found that coastal habitats, bogs, and arable land show declining trends while forests show increasing trends. When we went to uh, analysis at a more detailed level of habitats, meaning uh, different types of forest or grasslands, um, we found that uh, in general within a category, less disturbed uh, habitats tended to have more positive trends. Like for instance, uh, messy grasslands that are that it very often and uh, fertilized and so on, they had a positive, a uh, negative trend, while um, uh, alpine grasslands had a, a, a positive trend. We delivered this report to the commission uh, in the end of last year, and uh, we also shared this uh, report with the national coordinators. And uh, the idea of us was to to then continue this work uh, into a manuscript, uh, but we, uh, well, of course, the, there were some issues uh, that um, the UNIS uh, type two is a too detailed uh, habitat classification for birds, and it would be uh, good to, to use a higher uh, classification that is more meaningful for birds and repeat the analysis on this. And uh, also we did the analysis only at European level, and we know there are regional differences in habitat use and trends. So it would be also interesting to, to reanalyze the data at a regional level. So for uh, Peckham's, uh, it was a, an, an interesting work to do because uh, now we have a better idea of which habitats are represented in the Peckham sites. And we also see that there is some potential for additional habitat indicators and species using the site level data. And we've been uh, discussing this already in Peckham's, where we should um, produce other habitat indicators and whether it would be useful to use site level data to produce European trends for rarer species that uh, for which we don't have good uh, national estimates, but enough data at the site level. And uh, with that, I want to thank you and everyone for, for the help in this project. And uh, Hey, thank you very much, Anna, for that, that very clear 
overview of some, some interesting and, and very useful work. Um, hope people found that, that valuable. We will have, um, we'll be able to take questions, but we'll do that at the end of, of all the presentations we'll, we'll cover now. So, uh, so moving on, I'm just checking my notes, which I seem to mislaid, see which order we're in. Um, I think we next, we were going to go to Sergi uh, for an update on Ever Live. So as I mentioned before, when I talked about Ever 2, this was not, um, you know, this is something that's, that still lives and some exciting developments going on there. So uh, I'll uh, ask our, our vice chair of the EBCC, Sergi Hirando, to, to give us a presentation on, on the work he's been doing. Thank you, Mark. Good evening, everybody. Um, I will try to share my screen. Can you see it properly? Yes, perfect. Okay. Well, I will try to, to give you an update on, on this uh, project, which is in a way kind of continuation of EVA 2, but as you will see, it's it's uh, closely, very closely connected to the other two projects, to, to PECAMS and to EVP. Um, as, the, as the name informs, it's about updating the distribution of farmland birds in Europe. And I will try to, to explain a bit more on the context and on the, on the uh, very preliminary results we have right now. So um, we've been uh, we've been had a lot of progress in, in Atlas work at the European scale in, in, in Europe. And you all know that we have these two brilliant atlases so far, and probably in the, in the coming times, there will be a, a third European atlas. But meanwhile, meanwhile, there is a clear interest from the policy level, at least, also from the, from the scientific level, to try to get more information on the species distribution uh, on terrestrial birds, at least, uh, at, a, at a fine resolution, and especially at at a, at, at a regular times that are not so so long, so not every thirty years, but a more uh, frequent period. Let's say three, six year, something in this line. That's that's the origin of the Eva Life project, which started in a, in, in in Luzerne, in a way, in the discussion we had in in, in the Eva Two workshop. The idea, the idea is to, to update uh, breeding bird distribution frequently, and this is clearly linked to policy in a way. Um, this is also a link with the European Commission uh, requirements in a, in a way, general requirements. It's not, not, nothing specific, but the general idea of, of the interest of having more uh, updated in, information on distribution. And it's, it's not a new, uh, a new uh, pipeline for for getting more data. It's it's just uh, the idea of building a product on 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 the strengthened existing networks of bird monitoring in Europe. So basically, PECAMS and Europe portal. Uh, the general aim is uh, very ambitious, and that's why we we decided in in Luzerne to start with a kind of pilot project with fifty uh, farland species. And that's why the, the project has the name of Eva Life Farmer. And it has two phases in a way. The idea is that we start first with the monitoring data, so with the PECAMS data essentially, with these, these countries here shown in this, in this slide already interested in, in participating in the project. As you can see, there are also some projects, some countries that are not uh, officially in PECAMS, but are working in the direction of having monitoring data uh, in, a, in a very similar manner as PECAMS has. And there's also a, a second phase, which will start uh, next year and will, will, will last until potentially until uh, 2026, in which we are going to incorporate, we attempt to incorporate not only monitoring data, but also the casual data, so the data from, from portals around Europe. I will mostly uh, explain something about this, the work done in this first phase, uh, which is um, the one you, you, that has been using monitoring data. So this is, this is just an example for one species, uh, the presence and absence data for the Skylark in Europe, 
in the PECAMS network, and also these uh, these recent initiatives we we we've been uh, we've been having in Europe in in some uh, countries such as Moldova, Serbia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and North Macedonia, which are in a different color, just uh, showing that they are also participating in this in this initiative. Uh, the picture is not finalized. There are some countries that are uh, working with the data and updating the data in the site level tool. And so the picture is supposed to be much, much better in, in the near in the near future. The first thing we can do with this uh, selection of presences and absences is just to build uh, which would be uh, the 50k distribution of the species with the uh, with the data existing in PECAMS, in the PECAMS site level data. And that's essentially what the gray squares, the gray 50k squares are showing here. So the, the gray 50k squares show the distribution of the Skylark in the PECAMS site level uh, database while the orange ones show the squares in which the species had been uh, recorded or uh, informed to be there in EVA2, uh, but, but the species is not at least so far in this, in this uh, network of monitoring uh, plots across Europe. So in a way, we have this kind of very preliminary 50K maps on the occurrence of the species based on the locations of uh, of these uh, birds in Peckhams. Couple of examples. As you can see, uh, and as uh, as you can expect, the differences between the species detectability and abundance is reflected in the in the relative number of uh, orange and gray squares. So, in the in the the way in which the capacity that the monitoring uh, system has to, uh, to map the distributions of a given species. In general, in general, the, the, the preliminary picture is that the spatial coverage uh, that is attained in, in, in the, in the PECAMS, uh, PECAMS network and site level data is, is incomplete to build a kind of 50K atlas, at least, at least as, as uh, in, in a manner similar to what we do, uh, what we did in EVA2. That's quite clear. And the most obvious um, um, manner to, to make some progress is to, to work uh, with modeling as, as usually done in, in, this, in these circumstances. So that's essentially what we've been doing, uh, working with modeling with uh, a few pilot species, and trying to 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 produce pilot pilot uh, maps. On your left, you see the the moderate map built in EVA two for the Skylark, uh, which corresponds to the period 2013 2017. And on your right, you see a quite similar map based also on modeling for the for the period for which we we've been asking national coordinators to uh, to participate in this project. So for the period 2018-2022. As you can see, the maps are quite similar in a way. But of course, this is very preliminary and there are many things to uh, to test and to, and to think about uh, in detail. Other examples for other three species, these are the EVA2 maps. While these are the, let's say, the Evalai farmland. So for the next period, for the for the period 1822, for these three species, I will just move them. Of course, the models are not exactly the same, and there are differences. And we have to study in detail which which are the reasons of these differences to understand what we are doing in a way. Of course, the idea, final idea, and this is more than preliminary, the final idea is that having the, the models for different periods, in principle, allows us to produce maps of change, change in the species occurrence, the probability of a species being in a particular 10K square uh, in a given period, taking into account uh, all, the, all the constraints, all the data that we are using 
This is just a very preliminary example for the, for the total law showing which are in principle the capacities of the system to, to collect information on change. There will be a lot of work from now on on the validation of models. Uh, the validation of models is something that is um, often done uh, at, the, at, the, at the whole scale of, of our study, in this case, Europe. But given the importance of the of the uh, of the results at the national uh, uh, and maybe at the subnational scale, we are working also on the on the idea of trying to validate models uh, at country or or, or sub subcountry levels just to have more resolution on on what's happening there in the map. And this is just a preliminary example of 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 the kind of uh, analysis we are doing, trying to uh, to see which is the model performance in the different parts of this map. On the other way, uh, it's extremely important to, to, un to understand how we can interpret the results. This is a result of modeling. And so it's extremely important to see if this is a reliable model, if it's accurate, if it is consistent with national data, that's extremely important. That's why there will be a kind of uh, communication with national partners. And in the end, this is the main aim of, of this project to have this, this kind of um, communication channel on, on what we are doing at the European scale and what can be uh, done at the national scale. So um, the plan, in a way, the plan is more or less scheduled in, in these two phases. There is a, a first time uh, period which which ends at the end of this year in principle, which which has these three main uh, three main tasks in a way. The, the first is data collection still. So as I as I mentioned before, some countries are still providing the data. There is a, pro a clear process of data checking uh, that has been done in, in close collaboration with with our Peckham's uh, site level officer Ana Gamero. You, probably have to say some messages from, from her presently. And it's also a, a, a crucial period for, for modeling. It's, there shouldn't be not only these few maps, but also for maps for, for further species. And we have to, to, to do all these, all these analysis to, to, to try to see what, what we are uh, producing and which is the, 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 the value in terms of the validation of these uh, models. And by the end of the year, the idea is to have uh, maps available and a report available to all of, to all of, of the national partners, and probably to to plan a workshop to discuss on these on these results. We we do not plan to to produce a kind of publication with this, apart from informing informing the funders and at the European Commission, let's say, the, the, within the context of the Europa One project. Um, on what's the, the, the main idea and the main results of, of, of this project. And the time plan for the coming years is to, as I mentioned before, to introduce the, uh, the information for the portals uh, collected by the European portal and try to see which are our capacities to, to improve uh, the maps, for instance, at the 50K level. So which are our capacities to, to cover the, these gaps uh, for which we don't have information on the species presence um, in PECAMS, let's say, but also which are the capacities in terms of modeling and, and, and the improvement of, of this of these, uh, new and, and huge data set that we have in, in ABP. And that's all uh, briefly. Uh, many thanks to, to all of you and coordinators, volunteers and organizations and Happy to, to answer questions later after the end of the session. Thanks. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Sergi. Another uh, another great example of what can be done with the, the data that our, our network collects. Um, and I think that's a project that we can be very excited about to see what it's it's going to go on and produce uh, into the future. So um, yeah, look forward to, to the completion of this this part of work for the, the, the rest of 2023, but, but beyond as well. Sergi says we can come back to, to any questions people have at the end, but we have one, one last 
presentation. So on the, the third of the EPCC's three main projects. Uh, and if Gabriel is there, he can, can give us an update on EVP developments. Hello, thanks, Mark. I share the screen. Okay, now you see the presentation? Yes. Perfect. So I just prepare a brief, a brief presentation of uh, the most recent developments at, at the VP level. Um, first of all, uh, the, the, the geographical coverage really of the VP has not changed uh, recently, but uh, just a reminder, at the moment we are covering quite well most of the center and west of Europe, but at also some parts of, of Eastern Europe, including Russia, which was showing a few years ago. And most of Europe, the only the only country of sorry of Europe of the European of the European Union, uh, the only country that is missing that in that regard is Malta, but they are in, in line to 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 join the EBP project in uh, in the next in the next month. So uh, we'll cover less the the full EU uh, by the end of the year probably. At the moment, the EBP is collecting data from 21 different online portals. Uh, covering the, the wall of, of, uh, of the continent. And nearly the, the wall, you know, just I think is three, three uh, online portals at the moment uh, of, the, of, of the ones that are collecting uh, uh, less quantity of data that they still are submitting the data manually, but uh, the, the most of the data, the bulk of the data is coming to the, to the database on a daily basis with data up to date, up to the previous day, and automatically. So most of the data is nearly in life, in life mode. The, the numbers, the, the, the raw numbers of data collected by the online portals is really amazing. At, uh, from 2010 to 2022, uh, all the portals uh, contributing to DVP have collected more than, than 500 million records and, uh, and a nice chunk of data within complete list. So that's that's very important because the complete lists are more structured uh, data are semi-structured. It's not like monitoring data, but, but not as, as a typical causal data. You can have some more interesting signal there. So it's very important that we increase and increase the, the data in the, in the format of, of complete list. And then uh, all this data, of course, that we are collecting and, and collecting in real time, the, the, the main target is, is to use this data for, to, to produce products that are useful for, for the builders, for the management of, of uh, uh, builders in general, but also conservation. And one of the areas where we have been working more, more extensively during the last years has been in collaboration with EPSA, the European uh, Food and Safety uh, Authority, and we have been working with them since 2019 uh, to help them in the monitoring of the avian influenza, especially highly pathogenic avian influenza in Europe. Uh, and one of the more recent uh, products that we produced for, for in, the, in the framework of this collaboration was the new mediation mapping tool that was uh, presented uh, during bear numbers in, in Switzerland uh, last, last spring. So it's already public and, and can be uh, clearly accessed uh, through, the, through the website. If you don't know too much about, about this uh, uh, new mediation tool, there is also a, a YouTube video where you can, you can check exactly how it works. But the nice thing with this uh, tool is that this is the place where EFSA can check for the 50 species that they, they have as a, as a target for the monitoring of avian influenza in Europe. For these 50 species they have the most up-to-date information about the, the seasonal distribution of patterns based on, on EVP data, but also the connectivity patterns based on every data. So this is a combination of the two worlds of, of uh, data sets available from Euring and, and EVP. And it's really a quite, quite a, nice, a nice tool. Then after we finished this, this tool uh, and, and was presented in, uh, in, the, in, in last, last spring, we were working in, uh, with EFSA in a, in a new project, but quite interesting. And the idea of this project was that uh, now that we had the, the new mission mapping tool and, uh, and the 2K datasets that EFSA was, was uh, needing in terms of wild birds 
information. So the data set of Elimon connectivity and the data set of DDP in terms of, of the seasonal patterns of distribution of, of birds. Uh, it's a request us to, to try to combine this information and, and elaborate the first pilot uh, uh, model of uh, early warning for a highly pathogenic uh, avian influenza in, uh, in Europe. So to do that, what, uh, what we did is to, to produce abundance models at the weekly level uh, from EBD data for a set of 12 species, 12 of the 50 target species of EBSA. And then from Eurin, we elaborated models of uh, long distance movement on a monthly uh, basis in this case, not weekly because the Eurin data is more sparse. So you don't, you cannot push too much the data in terms of, of uh, ge uh, geographical, but especially temporal resolution. And we also use the Eurin data to, to model local movements or dispersal movements. And in this case, even the data was not uh, not enough to do models uh, at monthly level, and we did the models at the at uh, seasonal level. And finally, we we combine this data with the uh, information on all breaks of highly pathogenic avian influenza in wild birds. Combining these these uh, four uh, different uh, uh, outputs of EBP, Eurin, and uh, data from from EPSA, we were able to produce a this pilot uh, early warning system that is uh, forecasting uh, the, the probability of uh, appearance of highly pathogenic avian influenza in Europe on a weekly basis. That was a, a first pilot. We were quite unsure of what will be the, the, the value of the, of the final model, but uh, things went quite well. And, uh, and the final model was giving quite a, quite a lot of signal, much more than we, we expected. So EFSA was quite happy with the uh, with the results, and and uh, and now we are working in the next follow up project. Anyway, if you are interested in the, in this part of the of the project that we finalized uh, at the end of last of last year, you can check this scientific report that we published in the EFSA journal uh, also at the end of last of last year. The new, the new project, that, the follow-up project related to this uh, early warning system, uh, it, it will be a project for three years. The contract was already signed at the end of, la, of last year. The, the budget is uh, 600,000 euros and has five main work packages. But I will just summarize very, very roughly the, the, the objective of, the, of this contract, because the idea here is that we, we the, the final product of the previous um, uh, contract was this pilot early warning system. And the idea, and the idea now is uh, to start this, uh, this work with a new contract by implementing this early warning system in the migration mapping tool itself. Because the idea for, for EPSA is the, that the migration mapping tool is the place where we can visualize the, the, the data, but also where we can uh, place the different products that we will be developing for, for example. So at the moment, the early warning system model is in a separate place, in a separate website. But during the, the framework of this new contract, we will implement this early warning system model within the mediation mapping tool. And we will add also a system of, uh, of alerts uh, for, to, to inform in, a, in time and a, in, a, in a good form to the different state members. Then and uh, another thing that is very important within this, this contract is that we will be reviewing the list of target species that uh, is using EPSA the one, because it's, it's a list that was produced some time ago. This virus is changing continuously, especially during the last few years. And it's clear that the, the species that are affected, the, the wild bird species that are affected, has changed a lot during the last year. So, it's really a, it's a real need to change this, this, li this list and update uh, the list for the future. So that, that will be part also of this, of this project. And then the rest of the project will be uh, focused on uh, improving the model of, or the risk assessment model that we were producing in the pilot project from the previous contract. This will be done in different steps. So the idea is to, to have uh, the improved models uh, each one better than, than the previous one during the course of the three years contract. And, uh, and we are aiming, especially at the end of the, of the contract, to do the models not only 
uh, using better models, not only the data directly coming from DBT and, and Eurin, but maybe some tracking data. And also very important, we want to, to include in the variables of the risk assessment, not only the wild birds information, but also the information on the poultry part of the, of the formula. So that's, that's the scope of the, of the new contract that will be lead in this case by, by the colleagues from, from Sobon, but also the PTO uh, or institution and Auschwitz, which is a, a veterinary, well, is a company specialized in, in veterinary epidemiologist is, is also collaborating in this, in this, in the task and, and is having a quite a, an important role in the, in the project. Is this in, in essentially, these uh, four institutions are the same ones that were involved in the previous contract that created the, the first pilot early warning system. Then in, uh, in September last year, we, we submitted to the European Union a new proposal of life preparatory project, uh, which, which is quite, uh, quite important, not only for DBT, but also for, for DBCC, because this will be like the, the, the first project that where we ask uh, budget, uh, funding to, to the European Commission, where at the end of the day is not only uh, a target of DBP, but where we will be combining the, the data sets and the know-how of the three main uh, projects of the VCC community, so DBP, but also PECAMS and also EVA2. Uh, in this case, the, the project, uh, if we, we sign the grant, uh, will be starting in July. Uh, the news are good because the, the project was already passing through all the evaluation process in a, in a very good way. And we are now, in, in, at that specific moment, we are starting to, to elaborate the, the grant agreement. Uh, so we expect to, to sign the agreement within the next few weeks and, and to be able to start in time in July 2023. The budget is a bit more of 1 million euros. And uh, we have three main areas of work to be done in, in this project. The first area here depicted in the, in the left of, of, uh, of, the, of the screen uh, will be focused essentially in improving the, 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 the data collection, especially in, in the southeast of Europe and particularly in the Balkans area. And here it will be very important to cover the Balkans area uh, with online portals because in many, in many countries in that area, we still don't have online bill portals, so we are not able to collect uh, online bill portal data. But also in, in that part of the world, we will be also promoting the, the development and implementation of the international census plots from PECAMS in, in this same area. So the, the approach is combined. Uh, we will push from EBP and we will push from, from PECAMS to increase the, the, the collection of data there and also the capacities of the partners in, in that area. Then the, the second part of the, of the work will be focusing in improving the, the taxonomical coverage of DBP, because as you may know, the DBP uh, data set uh, is collecting the data in real time. And we have uh, the contextual information uh, from all the portals based on the world data set that the portals are collecting. But the records of the species that we are receiving at the moment is not for all the species present in Europe, but only 137. So the idea in, in, with this project will be to collect and include in the automatic data, data flow of the VP all the species recorded in Europe, because that, that will be critical, for example, to, to be able to, to elaborate uh, good products and, and deliverables for, for the, the European Commission. Then the third part of the, of the, the project is, is, the, is, a, is a, probably the most important, because at the end of the day, this third part will, will put ba give value to the first two parts of the project. So we, we want to collect better data uh, for all the species and increase the capacities and, and the collection of information in, in the southeast of Europe. But we want this data and in better quality and, and, uh, and in big numbers to be able to produce uh, outputs of interest for the Commission. And then here we will produce essentially two kinds of outputs. One will be based only in, in, with EBB data, and here we will try to assess the, the, the coverage of the Natura 2000 network uh, 
uh, for the terrestrial migratory species during the migratory period. So we will try to use this EBV data during the migration, the migration period to assess the, the, the quality of the coverage of Natura 2000 for these species and during this period. But then, very importantly, the other output that we will be producing uh, in this third part of the project will be essentially the part devoted to do what Sergio Rando was explaining before in terms of the second phase of the EVA2 life parliament. So the idea is that here we will be combining PECAMS data and EVP data to do the second phase of the, of the life atlas. So that's, that's very important because uh, this life project will be like the, the, the way that we have been finding no? to, to fund the, the new life atlas of the, of the EBCC. So at the end of the day, as I was commenting, this, this will be a very important project because it will be the way to, to combine the capacities, the data set, and, 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 uh, and the interest of the three main projects of the EBCC. Let's see if we can sign the, the agreement quite soon. And, uh, and then celebrate the, the project and start to work, which is, which is the, the most uh, complicated part. That's all from my side. That's, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, Gabriel, for a, a very clear presentation. And again, another project with, with exciting developments, brilliant outputs, um, and also uh, fingers crossed, great success in, in landing funding. So, uh, so well done to, to Gabrielle and all involved in EPB for, for that. Okay, do we have um, any, any questions for, for what we've heard? So we've heard from, from Elena, from, from Anna, from Sergi and Gabrielle about the, the three, three projects. Do we have any, any questions or comments from, from anyone attending? I see both a hand and a thumb up from, from Root, who's very keen, so, so Root. <laughs> yeah, um, that's my eyes in, in, in the evening. Um, yes, I've, I've got a question to Sergi. He was uh, explaining a, a brilliant project, but he was explaining about uh, trying to validate also the data on the national level. Uh, are you considering, uh, for instance, uh, to check the uh, outcome of the, of the trend maps with the actual uh, trend in time, or that it has been that that will be produced by the monitoring data. So you have these uh, lines through time, the temporal changes, and the, what must be a way in which the trend map also more or less uh, adds up uh, to a, a trend in time, and that would be a nice way to to validate uh, the outcome of the of the or the result of the modeling exercise. Yeah, I, I fully agree. Um, that's that's. The the kind of validation I showed before, it, it was more about the kind of static maps, not the change. But of course, we have uh, we have discussed uh, with Anna and Peckham's uh, colleagues um, on the possibility of using exactly the same data to, to validate the change. So yeah, we are in this line, but this will be, let's say, in the end of the process, <laughs> because firstly, we have to be more or less, more or less confident on the, let's say, the static maps. But yeah, fully agree. Okay, thank you, Ruben, Sergi, uh, Jean-Yves. Uh, yes, thank you for all the, these uh, nice presentations. I, I have a question for Anna. Uh, do you think the difference between the forest bird indicator of Peckham and, and the Eunis indicator is due to a different selection of species or uh, the fact that you calculate trends within the UNIS habitat? Is it because of other species or because you focus on one habitat and, and see the trends there? Uh, I don't know <laughs> if it's the different approach on species selection or, um, or on only selecting sites in forests. So, because for the for the Peckham's indicator, so we collect the the national uh, indices that are based on all the sites. But the trans, the trans species. If you compare species per species, you don't you don't see 
if um, there was a difference between the, the trend at the European level? Uh, I did not check that uh, in detail because I had 34 minutes. <laughs> and so I, but I can check this and uh, get back to you. <laughs> but, is, is the report, will will the report be available some sometimes or do? I, I send the report to, to coordinators. Uh, I can send it to you if you want. And we also have all the tables with all the associations uh, in the report and the trends uh, as a as an Excel file, so you can check. Thanks. Thank you very much, Johnny. Uh, Johannes. Hi. Yeah, uh, just just a short technical question. So on, I noticed that on several occasions, the country of Kazakhstan was mentioned, which is partly Europe and was also partly covered in the EBA 2 Atlas. Um, but there doesn't seem to be a, a national or even EBCC representative and uh, the country doesn't feature very prominently in the analysis so far. So I was wondering, uh, are there any initiatives to extend uh, EBCC activities into Kazakhstan? Is there any uh, interest? Or is the European share too small to be considered important? <laughs> um, I don't know whether any of my board colleagues have got any greater knowledge than, than me. I would say I'm not aware of any particular engagement at the moment. Um, but that's not to say that we would consider it unimportant. Um, but it's... Yeah, it depends on having uh, I mean, a delegate would be its first, a first step um, and but sufficient would, engagement. Would anybody have a delegate to propose? Because I think this is a good start. If somebody has been collaborating with uh, somebody in Kazakhstan uh, on either of these, either projects of relating to EBCC work, that would be a start to, to contact them. That might be a question for you, then, Johannes. Yeah, so if you are interested, I, I could ask, because we have been working in Kazakhstan since 2005 or so and have a lot of bird data, but not time series, but I have a lot of context. So if there is any interest, I might uh, propose someone or ask someone. Um, and I, I am pretty sure that there might be some interest uh, with a local uh, bird life partner, with Kazakhstan's bird life partner, which is ACBK, and they are quite good and quite keen. Uh, so if, if there is an interest, I could Bring you in in touch or in contact with people from the country i think if you were able to to do that we'd be very grateful that would be would be sounds like a good way of making that trying to make that connection so uh, just a personal interest to get it covered better because there are so many interesting species that occur only there in the in the dry steps so uh, it's, it's more also a personal uh, point of view <laughs> but yeah. i would do yeah great thank you very much for that and and henning i see a hand from henning yeah, hi. Um, that's a question for Sergi. I think it was a very interesting uh, presentation you gave, and I was wondering if it's uh, if it's purely a, um, an, a, an analytical approach where you get the data from from the national coordinators, or if there's any any part of it uh, that uh, involves uh, people like us uh, here, and is there a a process where you involve people in, in the countries or what are the plans in that uh, direction? Yeah, the plan is, is uh, essentially, as you as you have said, essentially working with the data and then uh, making workshop to, to try to, to work together in the interpretation and, and the potential use. Uh, this, is, this is a critical issue here. Um, in the discussions we, we we have with the with people in the commission, uh, in terms of the uh, the importance of the of the distribution data and the kind of uh, reportings that are in in process uh, nowadays in the in the European Union, but also in other countries, uh, um, the importance of having import having information of the distribution and reporting them is is at the national level. So, so um, and, and not at the European level. In a way, the, the EBA2 data is not somehow used officially in any um, international um, 
political um, instance. So it's extremely important the the, um, the discussion with the national partners here in in a moment to 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 see which is the potential use of this information or this product uh, for national partners. Um, but of course, firstly, it's it's important to to make some analytical work as you as you have mentioned, Henning. And try to see which are the let's say the the, the analytical sides of of these uh, of these uh, potential products. But yes, that's very important. But you mentioned the workshop. Uh, what's the aim of this? Um, in a way, it should be uh, on one side showing what we have done, uh, showing what's what's the the results at the European and at the national levels. And then, and then start a process of discussion on the on the potentialities of use of these maps at the national level. In some cases, it could be also at the international level. So that's that's the idea. That's the idea. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Henning, for the, the question and Sergi for a, for a good answer. Okay. Do we have any any further questions for our any our speakers? Any any comments or questions about our projects? Which case, I, I guess it's it's 9 p.m. for most of you. It's been interesting watching my screen and seeing the um, the windows go dark and the lights come on at different times across across Europe. Um, one of the benefits of still being being in the north this time of year is it's still light. Uh, ah, I see. I see a hand from Zhao. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mark. Uh, just to share you with you all some general comments uh, on this uh, very interesting uh, general meeting I was able to attend. First of all, I want to thank Alene for inviting me to be here. It was a huge pleasure for me to to see you all, and above all, to 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 have the opportunity to see the. Um, the uh, amazing dynamics of the ABCC and the project that uh, are running uh, uh, now. Uh, the, the last presentations that we, we share with us all uh, give us clearly an idea of what is coming on in, for the next future. And this is quite interesting because, um, in fact, our core business is uh, sensing birds. But it's interesting to see that uh, we are moving to projects that actually uh, go far behind the uh, strictly bird approach. Um, I was quite impressive with the, the presentation that uh, Gabriel uh, showed us uh, about the, the future and the present of the EBP and the connection uh, in the near future of the One Health um, concept, because Birds are important, we all know that, but one thing that is also much more important for society is what we can say about birds for all our fellow citizens that are not ornithologists, okay? And it's, it's quite good to see that we are moving on that direction. Um, finally, uh, last but not least, I, I, I must take the, the, the opportunity to say that uh, Mark, thanks for all you have done uh, in these four years. You, you took the share of EBCC after root, uh, which was uh, which was of course an extra challenge for you, but you you were able to put your signature in the journey of EBCC. So thank you with all my heart, and uh, in a couple of years we we'll share with some beers. Okay. Um, and finally, just to, to finish, uh, I, I'm, I think that, uh, it, uh, well, I will risk to say something that probably, um, uh, well, it's, a, it's quite risky, but nevertheless, I will take that challenge. I think it would be difficult uh, to find um, uh, someone better than Verena and uh, Sergi to succeed the mark and the current the still uh, current vice president we are all aware of the wisdom and the knowledge and the patience of verena we we all that work with with with, uh, with her in the eva 2 uh, were able to to check all that and so i think that the future of abcc is in very good hands and um, i'm very happy with that 
So thank you for your, your patience. It was a pleasure to be with you and hope to see you, uh, if not uh, before, at least in the next conference. Thank you very much, Xiao. I know we can, we can always rely on you for some very, very well chosen words. So, so thank you for those. And I completely agree with you uh, about, about EBCC being in fantastic hands um, going forward and, and what Verena and Sergi will be able, be able to do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Well, I hope you found this this evening interesting. I hope you found it worth some of your your time. I certainly, even though I um, sit in the meetings and I know a lot about these projects, still find it fascinating to see all the things that's going going on. So, so um, yeah, I've enjoyed it. If, if nothing else, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your support for the EBCC. Your continuing work for the EBCC. All the delegates, all those who work on our projects. Be the board members, the observers, uh, and anyone else I've I've missed out. It's a pleasure working with you, with you all. Um, we'll keep you updated. Remember our newsletters, our journals, our need for for items, the role we can play in promoting um, what you're doing. Please remember your roles as delegates and promote and support the work of the EPCC. Um, and have great springs and field seasons and so forth. Keep us informed, keep in touch. And um, yeah, thank you everyone. Take care.